Hi guys, welcome to the IDS Sports quick wrap video recap of IU's 105 to 59 win against Samford. I'm Robbie Howard alongside Connor Cloran. And Sean Morrison is staring at us right now. <laughs> I wish he would go away. IDS win. You win some, you lose some. But tonight, IU wins uh, behind a career high 26 points from Yogi Ferrell. And of course, 17 of those coming in. The second half, when he exploded, he had four three-point field goals they made in the second half, five overall for the game. Connor, what did you see from Yogi tonight? I think that, you know, he really showed that he's going to be the most critical part, uh, you know, for the offense this year, obviously being a point guard. But his ability, you know, not only as a square, but his ability to distribute. And I think that you saw that, you know, particularly when he drives the lane. He just has all these uh, this amazing, you know, wraparound passes, passes the paint and post. And really, I think that, you know, when uh, we just listened to Coach Green talk about him and he said that he just makes things easier for everybody else. He makes the game easy to play for the rest of his teammates. And especially with a young team, you know, kind of struggling to find its way offensively, that's going to be, you know, a critical component for them. Yeah, Yogi had six assists tonight also to go along with those 26 points. Some really nice passes. Connor Mascara Perea with a career high tonight. Mm -hmm. Eight points, including three Some dunks. monster dunks. I mean, just incredible dunks. I mean, that's tremendous athleticism. You don't see that just from any player. Yeah. IU never trailed tonight, uh, obviously 105-59, uh, to uh, a pretty easy victory for the Hoosiers, not really too much to complain about. It was interesting to hear Crean talk about how the team grew since beating LIU Brooklyn by just one point on Tuesday, how they, they grew from Tuesday to Friday. Yeah, he mentioned that, you know, in practice he said it was important for them. You can't, you know, you can't lose concentration for even a few seconds because, you know, the time spent together in practice is crucial for this team because it's still so young, it's still coming together. And just pretty much the overall message was that you, can, you just can't waste time. There can be no time wasted, especially, in, he mentioned that with a quick turnaround, you know, is how you play Stony Brook Sunday night, is that, you know, from game to game to game, they have to continue to improve. And he especially mentioned Troy Williams as a guy who showed the most improvement from um, IU's last game against LIU Brooklyn, the scary, narrow victory. But, you know, again, I think that, yeah, a young team is going to improve tremendously from game to game, and you know I think that while it might be frustrating at times now, and while it will be a roller coaster ride through the season, I think that by season's end this will be a much improved team. You know, but it's it's going to be kind of a tough ride, I think, especially through conference play. You mentioned Troy Williams; he had 10 points and eight rebounds, just missing a, a double double. Noah Vonley for the third consecutive game to start his career has a double double tonight. He goes for 13 and 10. And uh, it was interesting to hear Crean talk about the fact that Vonley and Williams sort of aren't getting the national attention that a lot of the other big-name freshmen, you know, Jabari Parker, um, guys like that, and Andrew Wiggins at Kansas. Obviously, Noah Vonley and Troy Williams not getting attention like that, but sort of saying, you know, they're, they're doing all the right things. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to speak for themselves. And I think that, you know, the, the problem with the, the immediate attention and the hype is that, you know, guys like Jabari Parker, a guy like Andrew Wiggins, you know, those guys are, you know, Real, they're, they're one and done. They, they've made that clear. And I think that with Troy Williams and Noah Vonley, while the potential is there, they're not going to be, at least in my opinion, they're not going to be a one and done type player. So I don't think they receive the, you know, the prima donna attention, you know, from ESPN and all the recruiting services and you know things of that nature. But again, I think that you know when you think in terms of NBA, um, I see Noah Vonley as a guy that if he stayed for two years, could be you know a consensus top five pick, and I think would make himself a lot more money if he stayed for another year. The other guy scoring double figures tonight for IU was Evan Gordon, who scored 10. First time he's scored in double figures with IU. And um, we also saw Colin Hartman yeah. get into the game, get his first bucket as that a future. That was uh, really surprising. when I First saw guy off the bench. Yeah, first guy off the bench. And I think that Crean said that he was shocked that he came into the game so early. But Colin was, not yeah. Crean. Yeah. I think you know he didn't really mention much in terms of practice, but I think that you just have to know that Hartman had to have had you know an excellent couple days of practice you know to earn the right to be the first guy off the bench. But and he had a decent game. He had showed a mid range jumper. You know he was consistent defensively, and you know I think that he could be a guy that could help IU down the stretch. IU held Samford under 30 percent from the field, 29.9, just barely under 30, but under 30 percent from the field. Part of that was 10 blocks. The second game this season that IU has had 10 or more blocks. Obviously had 13 against Chicago State. We've heard a lot about how IU likes to contend at the rim, and we saw it again tonight. And I think that that really speaks to the athleticism of this team, which uh, IU radio voice Don Fisher spoke to, and he said that you know, in all the time that he's been covering IU basketball, that this is the most athletic team that he has seen, and I think that we all highly, highly respect Don Fisher's opinion. So for him to say that is a pretty big deal, and I think that you know, you'll continue to see that translated in terms of blocks, in terms of rebounds, in terms of these insane dunks that we've seen from both Troy Williams and. Hunter Moscara Perea, as we've been fond of saying. 
Um, be what you know. What's what's your take on that? Take on at most athletic. No, I've won Don Fisher's quote on TV. Most athletic. I mean, I, I don't have the sort of historical background that Don Fisher has, so I can't really speak to that. But I mean, looking at this team play, I mean, it's it's obviously crazy athletic. I think the the most impressive part is when you look at guys bringing the ball up the court without the need of a point guard, really. You know, and IU does very well when the ball is in Yogi Ferrell's hands coming up the court and when Noah Vonley manages to get a quick outlet to him. Things usually go well, but we also saw, like, Devin Davis tonight um, scored, uh, you know, going straight from the basket or going straight from a defensive rebound all the way down to the basket, finishing with a nice spin move Mm. and a layup. Devin Davis, a, a guy that I think has been pretty under the radar thus far. Yeah, and I think that when you look at a starting five of Yogi Ferrell, Will Sheehy, Jeremy Hollowell, Troy Williams, and Noah Vonley, all five of those guys can handle the ball. And that makes IU an extremely dangerous team in transition. So, you know, if I'm an opponent looking at that team, I force IU to play in the half court, force them to execute. And, again, I always point to a team like Wisconsin. really takes away that transition game. So opponents looking forward, you're going to have to make an half court game, you know, to win games against IU. Favorite dunk of the night tonight? I, I, I think there were about – I'm. I'm estimating, I think there are about six tonight, yeah, six dunks, I think. I think that it easily has to be that Perea put back. I mean, without a doubt. In the second half. Yeah, it was just, that was, the crowd went nuts. I mean, that was the loudest they were all night. It was a pretty exciting game, a game that IU was never really in doubt. There was a run there at the beginning. It was tied 2-2, two to two, and then after that, IU went on a 24-4 to four run to really open this game up, and it was never in doubt after that. A, a pretty easy win, the kind of win that you like to see early on in the season Pretty much the opposite of, of the LIU Brooklyn game. Yes, polar opposite performance tonight. So IU plays again on Sunday night at 5 o'clock, and Connor and I, and we'll be joined by Nathan Brown again. Who's at IUDM, mm-hmm. really good cause there. Mm-hmm. He's doing that tonight, so that's why he's not with us, but we'll have another video and uh, plenty of content online at idsnews.com, so make sure you check all that out. For Connor, Bobby, see you guys. Have a good one. Be safe.